Welcome to Recap King Movie Explained. In the busy streets of New York City in 1881, a man manages to avoid another. He eventually walks into a building while appearing to be worried. He spends more money inside to send an express telegraph. A young man gets a telegram from his uncle asking him to act quickly to save him. The young guy walks to the vast estate of his late uncle, John Carter, where a lawyer informs him that John Carter passed away suddenly and left the young man with everything. The young Edgar Rice Bros. Daryl Sabar is passed an old journal by the man. After the attorney has left, the young man starts reading. After the American Civil War, the narrative starts in Arizona. Gold prospecting is being done by John Carter Taylor Kitsch, a decorated military captain in the Confederate Army. It appears that the locals don't like him. Carter is under pressure to join the cavalry under Colonel Powell Brian Cranston. After many unsuccessful escape attempts due to Carter's refusal to comply, he fools a cell guard, knocks him out, and rides Colonel Powell's horse out of Fort Grant. Powell and the other cavalrymen start to pursue Carter, but they are forced to stop when they notice that Carter has met up with an Apache warband on horses. The tension is heightened by the fact that both sides are armed and cautious. Soon there is a shooting. Carter decides to flee, but Colonel Powell is shot, so Carter goes back to get the wounded guy. They locate a small cave after making their way into a box canyon. When the Apache sees something on the rock above the cave, they quickly retreat. Carter wanders back to where the Apache had been and finds the spider symbol etched into the rock face. Powell is left near the entrance as he investigates further inside the cave. Carter discovers a strangely marked chamber there with gold-lined walls and ceiling. Powell almost misses the man who appears behind him because he is so entranced, missing it entirely. The stranger is a balding man with a shimmering robe and a knife that appeared out of nowhere. Carter shoots the bald man during the struggle and discovers that he had taken a blue glow pendant. Carter picks it up and says the things he overheard the other person say. Suddenly, he awakens in an unfamiliar wilderness. Carter tries to move but trips over his own feet and seems to float. He takes a while to figure out how to move around in this unfamiliar setting. He is unaware that the gravity on Mars is significantly lower than what he is used to. He travels to the surrounding hill, where he discovers a clutch of eggs hatching into green, six-limbed babies. He is going to depart, disturbed, when he sees a bunch of green monsters coming. When they spot Carter, they start firing until one of them orders the others to stop. They are mounted on powerful animals and have rifles. The four-armed, towering, green extraterrestrial salutes Carter and puts down his sword and rifle. Despite a linguistic barrier, the two are able to offer their names, much like the Apaches. The chief of his tribe, Tars Tarkas Willem Dafo, is known as the Green Man. Carter is asked to leap again because Tarkas is aware that he is not a local. Carter seizes the opportunity to leap in the direction of Tarka's weapons, but before he can fight, he is outmatched. Wola, a large, wide-mouthed, low-to-the-ground creature that is incredibly swift and insists on following Carter like a dog no matter how high or how far he jumps, is now Carter's guardian back in Tarkville, where he lives. Carter is frustrated as he searches for Tars Tarkas to obtain the medallion. But Woola is able to catch up with him and create enough commotion to foil Carter's plans. Carter eventually crashes into a Thark party, where Woola loudly enters and interrupts the gathering. Woola and his owner Sola were beaten by the irate Tharks. Enraged, Carter leaps in to stop the beating, accidentally killing a Thark in the process and demonstrating his prowess at long jumps. Carter is viewed as a fresh weapon by the Tharks who are upset at Sola for letting Carter get away. The Tharks brand her the following day in front of Carter, who watches in horror as they forewarn her that her next transgression would result in death because she has sinned so frequently that there is no more room on her skin for marks. The Therns will probably have the solution if there is a way to travel between the realms. Carter and Dejah Thoris enter a cave that is purported to be a temple of the goddess and her adherents. The Therns, despite Sola's attempts to dissuade them, 
the three are detained by the Tharks for entering the temple before Deja has a chance to decipher any ancient symbols. At tremendous personal risk, Tarkas aids in their escape, and Carter's surmise is that Sol is his child. Given that Tharks typically hatch their eggs alone and raise their young in secret, there had to have been significant criminal activity. They discover an upside-down pyramid-shaped building further up the meandering river. The solar system is displayed in dazzling blue images as Carter and Dejathora center. The ninth ray, a blue ray Dejathoris had been studying and which the adversary had been employing as a weapon, is the source of the blue light, which he now learns is artificially produced rather than supernatural. They also understand that Carter's appearance on Mars is probably the result of an Earth-to-Mars transmission of a replica of himself. On the advice of Matai Shang, an army of Tharks is approaching outside. He plans to put his skills to the test because he is interested in the stranger who is becoming involved in the fights. The three women Carter, the other two mount and run. Carter orders the others to evacuate as the hordes draw near despite Deja Thoris's protestations. With only Wola by his side, he sticks behind to battle the advancing army. After killing numerous people, he is brought back to the destruction of war and the discovery of his dead wife and child in a burned-out farmhouse. Carter eventually succumbs, just as a war cruiser from Helium appears overhead to put an end to the conflict. Sab then and Tardosmers get off the ship. As a symbol of trust, Sab then offers Deja Thoris his sword and proposes marriage. Despite stopping herself, Deja Thoris nearly murders him and orders them to take the hurt Carter to Zodonga for treatment. In a room with security, Carter awakens. He initially believes he is in helium, but the red-clad soldiers chuckle. A man in blue appears and informs him that he is in Zodonga as he considers the fact that he is in enemy territory.